Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. We are here for the Lazar Stamarzic scout report. I'm excited about this one. You guys have been asking for this one. But quick disclosure before we go ahead, these scout reports, you know, I'm making it for Inter fans today, but this scout report may end up being useful for fans of other teams. We've seen it. Fratesi's scout report I did last year ended up working all right for us this summer. Skamakas, we thought it was close, close, and now he's going to Atalanta. So until a transfer is confirmed, you don't know where a player is ending up. But anyway, we're going to talk about Lazar Samozic for Inter. But anyway, let's get into Lazar. So first of all, why am I so excited about talking about Samarzic? Well, to me, this guy is a bit of a throwback. This guy is a number 10, a position that pretty much doesn't exist right now in modern football. If this guy played 20, 30 years ago, he would have been 100% playing in the 4-4-2 diamond, 4-3-1-2. 3 4 1 2, he would have been the number 10, the diamond in behind the strikers. You can just see it the style of play, that left foot, the positions he likes to take up. He's a number 10. But in modern football, as we'll see, his position is slightly different. So, who is Lazar Samozic? So, first of all, he is 1 meter 83 tall, 6 foot. He's a center midfielder, born in Berlin, Germany, represented Germany throughout the youth teams, but recently decided to represent the Serbian national team, senior team, uh, because of his heritage. That's where his parents are from. So he is a Serbian international, although he's only got two caps for them. Now let's get into the scout report with the stats. And first of all, all the stats that we're going to discuss today about Lazar, you have to keep in mind, you have to take them with a pinch of salt, because at the moment he's clearly not a starter at Udinese. So his minutes, as you can see, he played 1,900 minutes in 39 appearances for Udinese this past season, which works out to be around 46 minutes per 90. So he's definitely not a starter, so the numbers can be a little bit skewed. But the numbers do look very, very good. Five goals and four assists in those 1,900 minutes. Very, very impressive for a midfielder and even more impressive playing for a team like Udinese, the very, you know, mid-table team in Serie A. As you can see from his FB ref chart, 2.34 key passes, 4.7 shot creating actions per 90. This boy knows how to create. He knows how to use that left foot that he's been gifted by the Lord. Let's get into his position. What position does he play in? Now here is his heat map from his past uh, season. You can see pretty much he's playing in the right centre mid position. He translated to Inter, the Barella position. And you can see the red hot spots in the corners as well of the pitch, which means he's a regular set piece taker at Udinese, which makes sense. Uh, that left foot is also made to be used at set pieces. According to Transfermarkt, you can see he's actually even played in some more, more attacking positions on the pitch. He's played, you know, in the centre attacking mid position, but also as a second striker a couple of times, which also, you know, points to a good adaptability. Um, you know, we've seen there was one time where Inzaghi played a 3-5-1-1 with Sensi playing as a second striker. Maybe this guy could also cover that position. But in my opinion, he's been brought in as one of the midfield rotational players. Now, let's start off with some strengths. I promise there will be weaknesses. Yes, I am a fan of the guy, but I'm going to look at this in a very unbiased way. Uh, first strength, we have to start with that left foot. We already talked about it. It is one of the best in the league already, that left foot. Accurate, powerful, and he knows how to make use of it. Look at his goal collection. Mostly outside of the box bangers. Some of those trajectories and curls that he made and manages to give the ball. Absolutely beautiful. There's just something about left-footed ballers, isn't it? And as we already discussed, the left foot comes in handy for set pieces. At Inter, Di Marco, of course, is a, a set piece taker alongside Hakan Chalanolu. So that side of things is already covered, but never hurts to add another set piece specialist to the mix. And of course, um, outside of set pieces, just having a left footer in midfield adds different angles that the inter midfield can play in terms of passing and patterns of play. 3.12 take-ons attempted, 1.6 progressive carries per 90. That is also a very specific profile that you can see he would add to a midfield like Inter. He's the type of profile that Inter need, really. Looking at the data MB comparison chart here, you can see he is most similar to Mkhitaryan as the as the Mezzala role where he's able, he's comfortable carrying the ball. And with Mkhitaryan going to be 35 soon, you can see the signing is potentially looking at taking over from Mkhitaryan in the next year or so. Um, so our inter planning for life after Mikitarian with Lazar Samozic. If I had to compare him to a player, 
in modern day football, I would say Zoboslai, the midfielder that Liverpool just signed from RB Leipzig. Funnily enough, Tamar Zic has also played for uh, RB Leipzig. Yeah, just the uh, the fantastic ball striking ability. Both of them started off slightly higher positions on the field. They both have decent athletic builds, but they will probably achieve their best in a midfield three, which is where he played Udinese. And this is, looks like where Klopp is about to play Zoboslai. So I do see a lot of similarities between the two. Now, it's time to move on to some negative. So there must be a reason, right, why he wasn't a certain starter at Udinese. There must be a reason why coach Sotil didn't trust him fully yet. First of all, his pass selection and decision-making still needs some work. You can see sometimes, especially when you have a left foot like his, it's, it's very easy and tempting to try audacious Hollywood passes, switches of play, but he still needs to learn when to do it and when to keep things safe. For example, look at this action versus Milan. He wins the ball back when he can't resist shooting from over 30 meters out. That is very, very poor decision making. If he does that into the San Siro will quickly turn on him if he, if he does that too many times. And of course, defensively, I mean, this is something that he's admitted himself. Shout out to the Italian Football Podcast who interviewed him a few weeks ago and there he was asked. What can you improve? Like what areas of your game do you think you can improve? The defending part. Um... Yeah, it's a bit fit also. This is important. I need to do it better. Yeah, this. Cool. Yeah. As you can see, he himself has admitted that this is a side of the game he needs to improve on. As a Mezzala, you need to be able to read the runs in behind from the rival midfielders, cover gaps, something that Lazar is still learning how to do. And you can see from the stat maps here, um, you know, he ranks really well in all the attacking parts, but in the defensive parts, very, very below par in terms of dual winning, tackling. Uh, balls recovered. He he needs to improve on, on that, and that's not just a you know something that you can work on in the training round. That's a mental switch that he needs to make. When you watch him, you can see he wants to play the game cleanly with his class. But the top level, especially the centre mid, you you need a bit of green that you need to add that dark side to your game. Example here, you you cannot be beaten in the air by midfielders that are smaller than you. Like here, he's beaten by Brozovic very very easily. This is an aspect that he has to improve on. He has to. And Inzag, if he gets his hands on him, would make sure to improve on that. We've seen Inzaghi has done similar work with Luis Alberto at Lazio and Hakan Chalanolu at Inter. And one more negative to speak about, his dribbling. We've talked about it in a positive fashion, but also it's a bit of a negative with him. We can see in the chart, he actually attempts a lot of take-ons, which is good. You know, he, he is very risky and progressive in his thought process that he wants to take on players and be um, a threat. But at the same time, you can see his percentage of completion of these uh, dribbles is not very high at all. This is again where he needs to learn where and how the timing of things, the decision making process once again of when to do attempt these, these dribbles at top level teams. You need to learn to play quicker and not hog the ball as much. You know, Udinese, you know, he's probably the most talented player there. He can get away with it by Inter. You can't be doing that. And then finally, this is not really a negative. This is just a, you know, thinking out loud do inter really need him i mean inter at the moment have a midfield of chalanolu and aslani Pratesi, barella mikitarian so samaj will come in to be the sixth midfielder not saying that he would be the sixth midfielder in the rotation but he would be one of six really really good midfielders that would be the best midfielder in midfield in Serie A easily as you can see i love the player i love the links with him but the Inter needing other positions at the moment cover. I mean, still we need a goalkeeper. They still need to replace Skriniar. Still the striker position has a hole to be filled. Do we really need to invest in a centre midfielder? But at the same time, I do understand that when a player like this is available, when you see this type of potential that a player can achieve, I guess it's hard to resist because I think if Samarzic listens and improves, under a good coach like Inzaghi, his potential is to be one of the best centre midfielders, attacking centre midfielders in the game with that left foot, with that ball striking ability, with his creativity, with his touch. This guy can go really, really far. You know, we're talking about a 25 million valuation at the moment from Udinese. One good season with Inter, getting into later rounds of Champions League, you can see easily his value doubling, tripling, um, especially with the figures you see these days. So all in all, Lazar Samazic, as you can tell, I am a big fan. If Inter do sign him, I would be really, really excited to have him in the team. I think you guys should be as well. 
he needs some time he's not the finished article as we have spoken about there's uh, still some things to iron out to to improve on but yeah the potential is exciting and let's see where he ends up hopefully he does end up at inter but if he doesn't hope this scout report was useful to non-inter fans but if he does end up at inter hope you interisti enjoyed leave your comments down below what do you think of samazic how do you see his potential do you think do you agree with me that i see this guy to be one of the best in his role in the in the near future or do you think i'm overhyping him overrating him and uh, you just don't see the hype i'm i'm happy to hear both sides of the argument leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hope you enjoy this type of content if you do support the channel by liking subscribing and if you want also become a channel member see you on the next scout report let's see what inter are cooking up in the next few weeks ciao ragazzi porta inter <laughs>